Greetings and welcome. My name is Moya McGinn Matthews. I'm the Director of Liturgy and Music here at the Church of Christ the King. And on behalf of Father Bill and our whole staff, I wish you a very Merry Christmas and welcome you to this celebration of carols at the creche. So what is a creche? Creche is a French word for crib. The English borrowed the word to refer to a nursery, a place where children, toddlers, babies are cared for. We've borrowed the word in our church to refer to a model representing the scene of Jesus's birth. St. Francis of Assisi made the creche very popular as a way of teaching about Christ back in the 13th century. But wait, you're thinking, I don't see a crib or a nursery. That looks more like a barn. Is that like the place where Jesus was born? Well, yes. Scripture tells us that Jesus was born in a stable near Bethlehem. Before we come to the part of the story that takes place in Bethlehem, let's go a little farther back to a scene in the city of Galilee called Nazareth. A young woman lived there whose name was Mary. She was very kind and good, and God saw that she was very special. One day, God sent an angel Gabriel to visit Mary, saying, The Lord has found favor with you. You are blessed among women. At first, Mary was frightened by the angel's greeting, but Gabriel went on. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have been chosen to be the mother of God's son. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you will conceive a baby and name him Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Most High. Mary responded, I am the servant of the Lord. May God's will for me be done. Because of Mary's yes to God, that day and every day, she is considered the first among all disciples and believers.
Mary didn't tell anyone about the visit from the angel. But there was one person who did know the secret. Joseph, the man she had promised to marry. What do we know about Joseph? We know four things. One, he's of the house of David. King David is one of his ancestors. Two, he's a carpenter. Three, he's a righteous man. That is, he's a man of the law of Moses and a man about mercy. Four, he's a man who listens to his dreams. An angel had come to Joseph in a dream to tell him that Mary was going to bear a son and that they should call him Jesus and that he would save people from their sins. And Joseph obeyed. Shortly before it was time for Jesus to be born, Mary and Joseph had to make a long journey to pay their taxes. So they traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. When the Holy Family arrived in Bethlehem, the city was crowded with people who had come to be taxed, and Joseph and Mary could not find a place to stay. A kind innkeeper saw that Mary was expecting to give birth and felt sorry for her and Joseph. He said to them, I don't have any room in my inn, but you can stay in the barn. At least there you will have a warm place to sleep. As Mary and Joseph settled into the barn for the night, the first to welcome them were probably the animals. The ox and ass aren't mentioned in the gospel stories about Jesus' birth, but they are always a part of the crash scene and very much a part of the Christmas carols we sing. Some might say, well, it's a stable. That's where an ox and ass would live, which is a good answer, but there is a better answer. The ox and ass are there because our ancestors put them there, and our ancestors knew their scripture. In the first chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3, God says, An ox knows its owner, and an ass its master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people have not understood. Maybe Isaiah foretells that Christ comes to us sometimes as one unknown, that in the normality of our lives, God is there, that a helpless child is God indeed, 
And there, before the lowly beasts, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. On that same night near Bethlehem, there were shepherds out living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. It is easy to sentimentalize shepherds. They are pretty low on the status meter, but the lowly shepherds become the first to know God's presence. St. Luke tells us that the angel of the Lord came to the shepherds. The glory of the Lord shone all around and they were very much afraid. But the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Then, Suddenly the skies were filled with angels, singing and praising God. Let's sing their song. <laughs> Yeah. 
Did you hear and notice what the angels told the shepherds would be the sign? They would see a child laid in a manger. A manger is a feeding trough for animals. Now, it was probably the cleanest place in the stable where the Virgin Mary could place the baby Jesus. Still, who among us would hope to place our own babies in a trough made of ordinary wood and filled with hay? Yet that is where our Lord, the God of the universe, the Savior of the world, rested after his birth. This sign teaches us Jesus didn't come to be a king living in the luxury and comfort of a palace while his subjects served him. Jesus came to be the least, to live a humble life, to endure pain and suffering for the sake of others. There is one more very important thing that the manger shows us. The manger shows us that Jesus, as a gift to the world, is food to be eaten. Remember what a manger is. It's a feeding trough. This is the place that the animals would have eaten. This is their source of life, nourishment for their bodies. And this child is our source of life. Jesus is giving himself up as food for our nourishment. Jesus is a God who gives of his very life, gives his very body and blood as a meal for our sake, so that we can eat and have life. The manger makes it known from the very start that even as a baby, Jesus will be food for all hungry people. May we always hunger and thirst for Jesus to come into our hearts. May we offer kindness to those around us, and may we work together for justice and peace in the world. After the shepherds heard the good news of Jesus' birth, they hurried to the stable and found Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus lying in the manger just as the angels had proclaimed. And then the shepherds traveled all around telling everyone what they had seen and heard. And all those who heard the good news were filled with wonder. That's what we're called to do too. When we hear God's good news, we're called to share it as much as we can. As we celebrate Christmas this year, let's be people of good news and show and tell everyone about God's wondrous love made real in Jesus. Sure. 
birds could fly. 